there's a lot of controversy about this main event. Let's end the debate. Francis Agano versus Surreal Gone. We're going to see who actually won this fight according to the rules. So the majority of the controversy was on the fifth round. The second and fourth were clearly Francis Agano's. The first two were clearly for Surreal Gone, even though officially one of the judges gave the first round to Nganu, which is actually pretty crazy. I mean, it's not much different what happened in the Coleman event. They gave the fourth round to Figueredo. That made no sense too. The judges were all over the place tonight. But the argument around the fifth round is that a lot of people believe that Nganu won it because of top control. People who think that Surreal Gone won the fifth round believe that he did enough offensively on the feet with the takedown and submission attempts to trump that top control. Ultimately, it comes down to what does the rule say. Now boys, let's throw all the bias out the window. Let's look at it as objectively as possible. Who really won this fight? Let's see what the rules say about effective striking and effective grappling. I've gone over this a couple times, but this seems to be some new people who haven't read the rules yet, so here they are. Quote, effective striking and grappling shall be considered the first priority of the round assessments. Effective aggression is plan B and should not be considered unless the judge does not see any advantage in effective striking and grappling realm. Cage and ring control should only be needed when all other criteria are 100% even for both competitors. This will be an extremely rare occurrence, unquote. So we know that effective grappling and effective striking are pretty much the only thing we're going to be looking at for this round. Everything else is pretty much irrelevant. So here's how it's written out. Legal blows that have immediate or cumulative impact with the potential to contribute towards the end of the match with the immediate weighing in more heavily than the cumulative. Successful execution of takedowns, submission attempts, reversals, and achievement of advantageous positions that produce immediate or cumulative impact with the potential to contribute to the end of the match, with the immediate weighing more heavily than the cumulative. It shall be noted that a successful takedown is not merely a change of position, but the establishment of an attack for use of the takedown. Top and bottom position fighters are assessed more on the impactful, effective result of their actions, more so than just their position. This criterion will be the deciding factor in the high majority of decisions when scoring a round." Unquote. So pretty much what it's saying is, when it comes to striking, damage trumps everything, immediate one blow shots are going to be scored higher than cumulative damage which is like volume striking. That's pretty clear cut. Effective grappling is a little bit different now. A takedown submission attempt reversal or a position taken that contributes to you finishing off the match or putting your opponent in a dangerous state, that's what's going to be ranked the highest for effective grappling. And this one is very important to look at. Top and bottom position fighters are assessed more on what they do with their actions rather than just sitting in their position. This is what is written out on the rules. So let's look at that fifth round. First strike of the fifth round, Ngano lands a light leg kick. Then Surreal Gan retaliates with a lead elbow that gets a big reaction out of Francis Ngano. This was a more damaging shot. Outside leg kick from Surreal Gan. And then Ngano lands a front kick to the knee, intercepting Gan's forward motion with a pawing left jab. Surreal Gan lands two body jabs, and Ngano grazes with a left hook, only for Surreal Gan to later graze a blitzing left straight. They both land a leg kick. Then comes the takedown of the round. Agano swinging a looping left hook as Surreal Gun ducks under it, gets a single leg takedown, and then settles in the half guard position. Ngano lands one strike off his back and then able to get into the full guard. And that's when Surreal Gun dives in for the heel hook and he does not get even close to it, ultimately allowing Ngano to reverse the position. Then Gun again goes for the heel hook, this time actually getting it somewhat sunk in. This is a lot different than the first one and this one gets counted for effective grappling. Doesn't mean that he was going to finish off the fight, no, but with this he got closer to finishing the fight than anything else that's happened so far. And you have to also note, when Nganu stands up again, he uses the heel hook to trip him out, only for Nganu to then drive him back to the mat and settle into half guard. And then Nganu lands 7 total ground and pound shots, all very light attacks, and ends the round on top, settling for almost half of the round. So as you can see, Francis Nganu lands 13 light strikes. Surreal Gun has 5 light and 1 medium. When you look at the impact of each single strike, according to the rules, Surreal Gun is winning on that exchange. Immediate impact trumps cumulative impact. Even Surreal Gun's light strikes were heavier blows than Nganu's light strikes. Added on to that, Surreal Gun got a takedown. He used a heel hook after the takedown, which according to the definition of the rules, that is effective grappling. Attacking in this kind of manner when you secure a takedown is going to reward you with effective grappling. The second heel hook is also going to add on to that. And I don't know if the trip using the heel hook when Francis Agano stood up, if that counts as a takedown, but it does transition the position, which also can add a little bit onto it as well. The biggest thing Agano did for the entire grappling scenario was that he got the reversal, but ultimately didn't do anything with it. So according to the rules, if you do nothing with the reversal, it doesn't count as effective grappling. If all you're looking for is position, that should not reward you in the scoring. You have to have some kind of immediate or cumulative impact on the ground with the potential to contribute to the end of the match. Just getting the reversal and then sitting on top is not doing that. While Surreal Gan attacked the heel hook twice, 
In his case, with the second heel hook, he's attempting to end the match using it because he actually got that snatched on. Now, if these were the old rules, Nganu 100% would have won this round. According to the new unified rules, Surreal Gon's takedown, submission attempt, and elbow on the feet have more impact on the potential to contribute to the end of the match. Getting a reversal and simply holding the position is not more impactful than the elbow, the takedown, and the two heel hooks. So according to the rules, I'm not making up the rules. I don't agree with the rules. If I were making up the rules, I would probably lean to Francis Agano or make it a draw because I don't think it's right to ignore control like that. But according to how the rules are written out, it would have to mean the Surreal Gon wins the round. Just for the fact that Engano did nothing impactful in comparison, even though Gon's impact wasn't that much more, the rules are written out to be extremely detailed. It's written out throughout the entire judging criteria that everything has to be exactly even, 100% equal. And it was not 100% equal when you look at it the most accurate way possible. So according to the judging criteria, it means that Surreal Gon should have won the fight 3 rounds to 2, winning the 1st, 2nd, and 5th, with Nganu winning the third and fourth. It was a very close fight, so for many people's definition, I'm not going to say this is a robbery at all. But to be as accurate as possible, you would have to lean more to Surreal Gon's side.